Hello, I'm Frances Crook and I'm Director of the Howard League for Penal Reform. And the Howard League is a charity that campaigns for less crime, safer communities and fewer people in prison. Now, a couple of years ago, the Howard League set up an inquiry on former armed service personnel in prison. We were keen to investigate why veterans enter the criminal justice system and explore the best ways that veterans can be supported in order to prevent offending in the first place. Left school, uh, served in the TA for a year before going into the regular army and staying there for seven years. Served in Cyprus, Kenya, Gibraltar, Germany and the Falklands and on operations twice in Northern Ireland and once in the Balkans. Uh, after leaving the army, uh, got a job at London Transport, was promoted to inspector, stayed with them a good few years. And it was around, now this will be 10 to 12 years after leaving the British Army, that uh, both my parents died within a year. And uh, well, basically I had no one to turn to. Whereas before, uh, if I ever had a problem when I was serving, I could always go to one of my superior officers and, you know, and you'd be looked after. Out here in Civvy Street, that doesn't happen. You know, the things which, which had gone wrong was that I'd started drinking heavily, got into uh, destruct destructive relationships, and, you know, started to use drugs. In most ways, veterans who find themselves in trouble with the law are no different to other prisoners. Both groups share many of the same needs. They have low literacy levels, problems with housing, problems with debt, poor mental health, drug and alcohol abuse. Indeed, army veterans in particular, who form the bulk of those veterans in prison, are often recruited from the very same disadvantaged communities that other prisoners will come from. While veterans in prison may have much in common with other prisoners, it is true to say that their status as individuals who have served their country is also very important. If the system recognises those in its care as veterans, then this should be the gateway to help and support from those best placed to provide it, such as Veterans Aid. Our experience at Veterans Aid bears out the report's findings. That there is no evidence that there are large amounts of veterans unreported in the prison system. In fact, most of those who have fallen foul of the criminal justice system got into trouble many years after discharge. It is very rare for us to see any direct causal link between military service and crime. I mean, my experience was I, I didn't come across many ex-servicemen in prison. Myself, I served seven years in the army and it wasn't until 10, 11 years afterwards that I started getting in trouble. And there's no connection between my military service and prison. If anything, you know, the army kept me on the straight and narrow when I was in it. It was afterwards when I had no one to turn to. Certainly, some of the ex-servicemen and women who contact Veterans Aid have criminal records for petty to serious crimes. But this does not affect our willingness to help them or their entitlement to the considerable amount of support available from the ex-service community. The army weren't the reason I went into prison. They never did anything. It was me that put me in prison. It was me that went out there and did things that got me in trouble with the law. It wasn't nothing to do with the army, and I, I know that. So it's, it's, that's nothing. It's, it's, it's only me that's gone out and done this, and it's only me that can change it. But I needed the tools to, to be able to change it. And it's veteran aid that have put me into somewhere that's shown me the tools that's going to change me, and which is changing me now. The main service charities work hand in glove to this effect. We know from experience, as a hands-on operational charity, that there is a real danger of over-attributing post-discharge dysfunction to military service. It is far too simplistic to blame it for criminal behaviour years later. This preoccupation with the myth that lots of veterans are in prison distorts the truth, which is that military service for most individuals has very real lifelong benefits and advantages. I enjoyed the army immensely. And I did say to Phil when I went in there the first day, I did say to him, 
is there any chance I could join back up? Because if they'd have had me back, I would have. Media output suggesting that those leaving current operations could be heading directly to the streets or to prison has created a widespread public perception. One that is simply not supported by research or Veterans Aid's considerable experience. And as a key frontline charity for veterans in crisis in the UK, we would be seeing this. The reality is that the vast bulk of those leaving the armed forces make a seamless transition to civilian life. The Howard League inquiries found that if you are a veteran returning to the community, then help is there. Many veterans who end up in prison, however, offend at least 10 years after leaving the army. Their period of service is likely to have nothing to do with why they've committed a crime. The challenge then is to ensure that individuals can get in touch with the support they are entitled to as veterans and to ensure that as few as possible end up behind bars.